Today, I'll be going through the main software used in the structural engineering field. If you stick around to the end, I'll give my top five softwares that'll help improve your design workflow, improve your design efficiencies, and just make engineering planning enjoyable. These are not the standard softwares you've heard before, so please stick around to the end to find out what they are. My name's Brendan, a structural engineer based in Australia, and I produce videos that help grow your career both technically and professionally. So if you do like that, please subscribe. There's a variety of softwares out there and not every software is made best for its task. So it's worth knowing what they are and what's the best way to try and utilize these softwares. And these are generally break down into a number of different categories. These are either lateral design, slab design, frame design or elemental design. There is other softwares out there, but these are more replacing hand computations and not really imparting the benefit of computational analysis. So how about lateral design? There's a software called eTabs that is the main software used in the industry today. This is an FE analysis that allows you to model a whole building. So you can design the slabs, the columns, and the walls. eTabs is relatively simple to use. And all I use it for is exporting the lateral forces outside that structure. I use other softwares to design the other elements inside that structure. All I'm really using this software for is to get the lateral forces out. It's really where it shines. Another software that I use day in, day out, is Wrapped and RAM Concept. Now, what is Wrapped? Wrapped is really a simplified slab design module that it makes designing of concrete structures really simple. It does both RC and PT design. With a simple interface, you're quickly able to see where your stresses are, where you need your reinforcement, and how to play with tendons. So through this, I'm able to quickly iterate where my drapes should be by pulling them up or down and seeing how it's imparting inside the structure. I generally do a couple of wrap runs before applying it to a more complicated software like RAM Concept. RAM Concept is a program developed by Bentley that allows through the 3D analysis of flat plate slabs. It does both similar to wrap, both post tensioning and RC design, but it allows you to work inside that 3D space. As you can see here, we're spinning around a 3D model of side of structure. So we're able to model steps and folds, so we're able to drape, drape our tendons through inside our structure. It's really simple to use, and really where you spend most of your time is both modeling the, the reinforcement and the post tension inside your structure and setting up your design strips. Hence I said, you first start off with wrap so you can have your first guess of what post tension you need. And by starting off with a simplified program like wrap, you're able to check whether your model is behaving correctly as well. Where you really should be spending most of your time with a program like RAM Concept is setting up your design strips. So if your design strips are not set up correctly, you can really produce garbage results. So where your column strips and middle strips should be is where you should be setting up your design strips. Frame design, there's a number of different softwares that can be utilized. There's MicroStrand, STAD, SpaceCast, or SkySiv. I'll be mentioning SkySiv later in this episode. The one I'm currently going to mention now is Space Gas. This is currently what I use quite a lot. Space Gas allows you to easily frame up a steel frame structure, modeling all the portal frames, sway frames, and steel, steel design. So generally, where do I use this type of software? Is in a side, a steel frame structure, where your concrete structures, which are relying on shear walls, I generally use a program like eTabs, where these big steel frame structures, which is where eTabs doesn't model so well, I'm generally using a program like this to model the behavior inside that structure. This will not only allow you to design the members, but also the connections as well. When you need to do a more detailed analysis of a single element or the vibration or assessment of a side of structure, this is where Strand 7 or SAP comes into play. SAP is a program offered by CSI and is really specific for that more detailed assessment over size the ETABs, which is general builder modeling. SAP allows you to model individual elements and really drill down on that side of assessment. Similar to Strand 7, Strand 7 allows you to really drill down on how internal stress is inside that structure. So if you need to look at the stress inside an element or joint, that's where Strand 7 really comes into play. Another program that is more elemental design is SAFE. SAFE is more designing for your raft slabs. It allows you to link up to the forces coming out of ETABs to design that raft. This is really where it comes into play is designing the, the raft supports as it allows for spring actions and lift off loads. With the move to a paperless design, no list would be complete without mentioning Bluebeam. So where does Bluebeam is a major PDF editor adopted by the industry today. It has a number of cover features where you can utilize it to calculate areas. You can do it to do counts on products. You can also manipulate drawings to get out drawings. Sometimes you'll be doing editing in PDF to modify a drawing that's already been released. Just say if you've got comments on it, you can modify that drawing to get answers back quickly. Now, as promised, I'm gonna give my top five engineering softwares. Now, number five is SkySiv. This is a software I've just started playing around with. 
So what is sky sieve? It really replaces my space gas that I was talking about earlier. So why do I replace this type of space gas? It allows you to have a cloud-based analysis of frame elements. So if you know this critical answer inside a meeting, you're able to utilize SkySieve to get those answers quickly. And through making an API call is, you can automate this through, say, an Excel or other programs to call those APIs to get the answers that you need. SkySieve allows you to design not only steel sections, but also concrete sections as well. And we'll also do basic wind design as well to a number of different codes. Another benefit of SkySiv is that it's not really a black box like many other softwares are. It allows you to drill down on the computations of every design. As you can see here, it's got full working examples of how they've got to the answers they've got to, so what factors they've used out of the code, and what type, types of codes they've also used. SkySiv also has the broad range of designs, as I said earlier. So you can do either timber design, concrete design, even steel design. So that's some of the benefits that you have from using this software. And, and some of the big aspects, as I was saying, is really that API and this not being the black box like many other softwares are. Number four. Now this is MathCAD. So where do I utilize MathCAD? This really replaces hand computations and where you should be doing a bulk of your design. MathCAD should be getting more and more popular with the push to go paperless. It is, it is invaluable, it is allows you to produce a dynamic spreadsheet that, that you can see all the working out. So as you can see here, you've got every variable working across you. So it's exactly like a hand computation in the way it's laid out. So this is where I really receive any of those single calculations that you're doing. So if you're just calculating a wall, a column, a floor as a singular element, something like MathCAD is better as you need to work out what the answers are. You work through by hand, if you're displaying it to someone, they can actually work out the process you, you went through to get to that answer. Now, a couple of things you need to know when you're starting to use MathCAD that will help you out. So if you need a Greek symbol, the command Control G will change that letter into the equivalent Greek symbol. If you need to do a subscript, that's just Control minus, that will give you a subscript, or forward slash, that will be square root. At the moment, you can only do subscripts when you're defining a variable. It doesn't allow you to do superscripts. Just something to watch out for when you're defining your variables. When you need to design that variable, you need to use colon. You can not just as equal as that will equal the function that you're trying to equate to. So to define that variable, you write the variable for, then use colon to define it. So this program basically replaces a lot of different softwares that are out there that just do these single standalone answers. But as it's not a black box, as you've had to write it from scratch and laid it out efficiently, you know exactly what's happening, what the answers are, and how you got there. And it's really easy for someone else to check as well. So if you're also trying to show off to your managers, it also looks impressive as it's a very neat example of a computation. So you can spend a little bit of time to make it look neat and impressive, and then you can use it multiple times as it is a dynamic in nature. Number three, now this is Excel. I feel that most people use Excel incorrectly, as I generally use it like as what I was mentioning that I use MathCAD for. As Excel has cells in there that can be hidden, you don't necessarily know what each cell is calculating. So there can be errors inside your spreadsheet that is easily missed over. So where should I utilize Excel? Utilize Excel for its big database. So it allows you to pull data in from other areas and process it out to other, into other elements as well. So where I utilize Excel is both processing data in and out, so using it as a database transfer, but also for using it to prototype design workflows, which I'll talk about later. So people are using Excel incorrectly. So you can also benefit from utilizing the VBA script. Through utilizing the VBA script, you can really unlock more of the power of computing. Through doing that mass calculations, you're able to increase your design efficiencies through processing from, from a design analysis software into Excel. So where do I see the bigger benefits in using Excel? It's from pulling the answers out of a design analysis software, post-processing and, des and designing it inside Excel then pushing it out to a Revit type software. Now this is where the biggest problem is happening. As you'll soon find out, eventually you will break Excel. As you'll be going through that design workflow, you pull so much data into Excel, it'll make it take so long to run. For example, I had one software where it ran and it took hours to run. It came up with the right answer, but if I've got to walk from my computer for, for hours, it's really the incorrect software to be used here. So as I said earlier, I use this to prototype my designs. As if I see a design workflow that works really efficiently, I can really drill down and build the interface out. 
before spending a lot of time developing any other programs, which I'll mention later. Number two, now this is Rhino with Grasshopper. This is really where the joy of engineering occurs. It's also a light way to move into programming as well. So where's the benefits of Rhino? As you can see with Rhino, it's very much a way of transferring geometries between elements. What it also allows you to do is also link up different element software. So if you have a geometry coming out of one area, you're able to post it, post process through a program like Rhino slash Grasshopper. There's also an addition that's coming out soon released by Rhino, which is called Rhino Inside. What this allows you to do is link directly up to your Revit model. For those who don't know Revit, this is the main engineering software that we use for drafting purposes, especially in the 3D space. So you're able to grab that model that you've got from the architect and post all the geometry straight out of that model to get you your analysis to your analysis software as quick as possible. What it also allows you to do is link up a number of different softwares. So if you're pulling answers out of one software into another, because it's got different modules that people have built on, you can grab these from this location. One tip when you're using gra Grasshopper with Rhino is go into a place called Food for Rhino. Now what this is, it's, this, it's a forum where people have released either paid or free, free to use modules that help you utilize the power of Grasshopper more efficiently. So the place that you go, you can get these modules you have to install and they have little elements in there. As you can see, it's really a soft way to generate into programming language as well. As you've got these little batteries, as they call them, which are these little modules that have inputs and outputs, and you have the strings going from them, so you can see the flow of data through the system. And and again, as it's not as it's not a single use, sometimes it would be, but a lot of time you can write scripts that would be used multiple times over and over again to get you better answers. So you can spend a bit of time to make something a bit more user-friendly and make it more variable across other projects because you can utilize it over and over again. So as you can see here, you can really pull out the geometries outside of structure, passing geometry in from, from a program called Revit and passing it out to a design. Where it's really benefit here as well is when you need to show off your design to an architect or someone that's not engineering based, as you're able to use that graphic interface to explain the problems that you're having with inside your structure. It's really a powerful tool for both displaying design problems, analyzing it, and passing geometries in and out. Number one, now this is Python. It's a programming language. This is really a game changer for structural engineers. Most people come across this is when they break Excel. They try to pull too much data through that Excel software. It hasn't crashed, but it's taken way too long to run. They're saying there's got to be an efficient way. So most people come across trying to do a programming language such as Python because of the way that they're trying to process data. For one example, I had a program that took hours and hours to run. I parted, ported it to Python over a weekend and that one process that was taking hours to run was now seconds. This is really a benefit from where Python is driven from. It's a big data processing system. So it not only allows you to overcome the bottlenecks of Excel, you can also automate those repetitive tasks. So if you've got something that's going over and over again to check something, especially in iterative design, you can port that into a program like Python. Python is also a software that you're able to strap onto programs like eTabs as there is an API call that you can program into Python to get out those repetitive tasks. So you can pull the forces all the way out from, from your eTabs, port them into your design and even port them straight out to a Revit type software. Ramp Concept is also about to come up with an API that can be programmed through Python. So what this will allow us to do in the future is do our load rundowns more efficiently through porting it through that API and programming it out to the other situation. Now I'll go back to my, my design. So there was one design where I had an ETABS design that we had critical load cases. So what I did it, what I used Python for was to find the most efficient design I, I needed. On one tower, I had 72 win cases. So if I had to calculate more, think about all the processing power I needed. So in Python, I was able to filter out all these critical cases, design it up into the critical loads and just really drill it down to the critical cases for my design. They're thus reducing the amount of computing power that I actually needed. Now, some of my tips for trying to learn, learn a program like Python. Firstly, try and build standalone modules. So just 
for that element just to do one thing. So whether it's just calculating the moment capacity of something, it's working out where your reinforcement is. Build standalone modules so they can build on top of each other. What this also allows you to do, if you're building out these modules, you can pull these out and use them in other areas as well. There's a really good forum out there called Stack Overflow as well. What this allows you to do is to ask questions out there. It's an amazing community that will try and help you out. Most of the time you may be able to find your answer without even asking it. So if you get stuck, if you're searching on for Stack Overflow to find those answers, if the answer is not out there, you can always ask inside that forum, you'll find someone that will really there to help you out. It's really a great community of open source software and people are always willing to help. And when you're starting out as well, there's another program called Colabs. This is offered by Google. It's a free cloud-based Python interface for both writing and running scripts. As this cloud base, if you're out and about, you can still run it if need be, if you've written it efficiently. And Colabs also allows to have multiple people working on the same script at the same time. So you can collaborate more easily, especially cross space, which is even more important in today's society. Another area which I strongly recommend if you're getting into a site or programming language is looking at version control. There is services out there like GitHub that allows you to do this. I'm sure if you've written a lot of Excel design sheets, you've always come across this, where it's where you've updated the Excel sheet, but you potentially haven't updated it somewhere. So you're always coming back to try and find that updated spreadsheet. And sometimes when you do that update, you have broken something. So thus you need to revert back and you have that bane of saving over that one design spreadsheet instead of versioning it properly, where GitHub allows you to roll back that change. So really look at versioning control. So when you're just starting out, Yes, I would focus you towards Excel so you can get a feel of how you play and manipulate data. But I would encourage you to try and learn more like a programming language like Python as it really will unlock the processing capacities of side your computer. Now, as I said, I use Excel to try and prototype those design workflows to manipulate and play around so I can throw it to other people quite easily through like a beta type situation or an alpha as you, as you might like to call it where they play around with it, see whether it breaks, see whether, whether they like it, where they don't, before I spend the time to programming it in a program like Python. And Python is really where all the efficiencies happen in Excel. As it reduces those repetitive tasks, it allows you to pull those designs and process data. It allows you to copy from one area and process out the other. It's really where you can start to enjoy engineering. As it reduces those repetitive tasks, you can spend more time on the things you like, spending more time on those critical design elements such as shear walls or or outriggers or mega column designs, focusing where you should be spending your time instead of those tasks that are just time consuming. So what do you think about the software I mentioned in the top five of, that I have? Do you have any that you think should also be in the top five? Please comment below. And if you did like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you next week. That's number three. That's four. <laughs> number three.